Coming up on the Invent With Me podcast. It was diamond plate studded. I never brought that up. He just knew that was the feel I was going for. And later, if you're at a super loss, something you can do right now is... Hello, guys, and welcome to the Invent With Me podcast, where each week we guide aspiring inventors and product creators to turn their innovative ideas into reality. Learn valuable tips, insights, and success stories from a couple guys roughing it in the field of inventing so that you yourself can make your mark in the world. We are your hosts. My name is Grant, inventor of Torque Strap, a killer new spring-loaded cargo strap, a strap so easy to use, you just pull. And I'm Marcus, inventor of Quick Tie-Down Anchors, a very simple tie-down anchor for docks, decks, and trailers that utilizes the gaps between the boards. That it does. Thank you yep. for that, Marcus. And without further ado, this is episode 27, going yep. back over packaging. You know, we've talked about packaging loosely in episodes. I'm not sure if we've ever dedicated an episode to packaging. I don't think we have. And I wanted to bring this up because I'm right in the middle of packaging the new Torque Strap Pro. And packaging has always been hit and miss. You work with City Global. Mm -hmm. What was your packaging experience? Um, when I first started with them, it, we, I kind of had in, in the mind that I was going to do a hang tag kind of a, a card, sorry, not a hang tag, a card. Okay, like a backer board type of card. You know, it was going to be a simple plastic. I wanted to try to stay away from like wrapping things too much in plastic and get away from that, but a very simple card. It had the picture, what it does, bullet points, all that good stuff on there. And it had two anchors upside down, so flip-flop, so they fit. And that was going to be kind of my retail, stick it on on the hanging shelves in wherever, mm. you know, in a, in a Harbor Freight or a Home Depot. What I learned quickly is when I went to Amazon, decided to go to Amazon uh, to start selling, it didn't really, that part didn't matter. And it was more about what could I get more in a box to ship them or what was easier for them to ship. So mm. for me, the actual thing became a bag. So I stayed away from plastic I had a little muslin bag, mm -hmm. um, and a very little simple drawstring bag. Yeah. And, you know, once you go on Amazon, you've already bought the thing. Not that you don't want it to still look nice, or if you're going to give it to somebody, you want it to look nice, but I didn't need it to have a ton of real estate and be bigger than my product because you've already know what it does. You, you, you know, you have the instruction pamphlet in there. So long story short, it totally changed my mindset of what I thought I needed to what actually saved me money and was easier. Mm. Now, what about the customer experience? My wife bought a freaking like $400 straightener a couple weeks ago. But this thing comes in like this uh, matte finish black box. A straightener for your hair? A hair straightener, oh, okay. yeah. And then, and then inside the box was another matte finish box that slid out just perfectly vacuum yeah. sealed. And then you open the top and the inside's velvet with custom molds to hold each individual piece. And it was like a whole experience. Mm. So you said that like, oh, well, you bought it on Amazon, you get what you get, you know, I'm going to throw it to you in a, in a, in a, in a Walmart sack. <laughs> But don't you think that, like, if someone's giving it as a gift, they might want something that looks a little bit prettier? Not that yours is ugly, but in general for our listeners. No, my, I mean, my, mine's a hardware product. This, I guess the, the, the for me, and, and I'm speaking solely for mine, there are absolutely experiential products where you would appreciate it in something nicer. Mac computers. M Mac computers. Apple computers. I mean, it's, yeah. our, it's an air about it, right? right? And you open and the box is sleek and it's... For me, it's it's a hardware product that most people who are going to buy it will throw away whatever packaging. They will never use that. So I opted for the bag because what it does is it gives you, you know, you throw it in your glove box, you throw it in your trailer box, you do whatever. Or as far as people working out, then it's a nice little drawstring bag. They'll throw it in their workout bag. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's my version of making something nice for what I'm selling. Sure. Right? I don't think... a. a a cute little box, it would go in the trash and then it would be unusable and it would be a waste of, of packaging. So the lesson there is know your product and know your buyer. A hundred percent. I mean, if, if I'm selling it to the pet world, you know, or somebody who's, then maybe I want to snazz it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. People like something a little, a little more she-she or something a little, but even the bag then would be usable. The problem is the bag wouldn't be good for the shelves in, let's say, a Petco. Right. So I would have to redo my packaging anyway. Mm. And and mo that's one thing people will learn if you are going to get into retail places. Each place has a... And I think 
Um, Craig on 16. Yeah, Craig, that's right. Craig talked about they are massively specific yeah. on exactly what they want and what can and can't happen with their packaging. Right. So, But what, what have you learned? I mean, you're in the thick of it right now. Well, so I want to get into it later, specifically how to engineer packaging. Let's be clear. This episode is going to tell you, well, do I go to China and have them throw it together? Do I make it in the mm-hmm. U.S. and pay too much for packaging? I'm going to get into all that in a minute. But what I want to say is, first, you have to consider your pathway. And you're touching on it right now. Like, you and I are both both faced with the reality, not a harsh reality, just a reality that Amazon and e-commerce is going to be our sales 97%. Mm. There's a, there are wholesale deals that come through with small uh, mom-and-pop shops, things like that. But at the end of the day, we sell every stinking day online. So you don't want to ship a lot of air. What do I mean by that? You don't want a box that has thick corners that don't need to be that and because what happens is now your packaging gets your your shipping box gets bigger your volume gets bigger you can't fit your product you know keep in mind when you first start shipping your product if it's small like marcus's you're going to slip it in an envelope that can be packed tight and could potentially ship for as little as six dollars anywhere in the u.s my torque straps, I was so lucky because they fit right inside the padded flat rate USPS envelope. I could ship it next door for $8.25 or to um, Buffalo, New York for $8.25. It didn't matter. So that was like a lifesaver. Had I put the torque straps in a rigid box like they're in now, I'd have been paying $13, $14 in some cases to UPS it across the country. So think of how, when, how small can I make it? Because this is, your, your product is going to be e-com first. I think a lot of people like to think that a store is going to pick me up and yeah, so it needs to look good on the shelf. And it, it, it does keep that in mind. But the reality is you are a, a long way from retail. I was just talking to Craig yesterday. I said, Craig, I think I said, I make the most money when I sell online. When we chase down retail, I lose money. The margins are less. The time, going to a trade show, kissing hand or kissing babies, shaking hands, all that stuff costs money. I make the most money when I just optimize my website and my Amazon and push that. And he's like, you're right. And I said to him, I said, I've been looking at the numbers of competitors. I don't think it's unrealistic to say that Torque Strap could do $20 million a year in e-commerce before we're kind of hitting like the market cap of, of, of North American e-commerce. And he goes, yeah, those numbers don't scare me at all. Mm-hmm. I w- he said, I would shoot for that, and you may exceed it. And then and, and that's when you branch into like the, the Europe's and the – we're already doing Canada's, but the Australia's and all this stuff, uh, and, and, and retailers too. Like you're going to have a lot more leverage when you're doing – tens of millions of dollars on Amazon to get into retail. When you're small, they're going to have demands. They're going to have meetings after meetings. You're going to bend over backwards. You may redo your packaging. You may spend uh, three weeks and $3,000 redoing your packaging, and they never freaking call you back. That's just the reality of retail. It is a brick wall. So focus on (laughs) e-commerce. I mean, I get, you know, it's about packaging. So regardless of what avenue you're going to take, you you start out with something in mind. Yes. I think it's to define your customer and and what, what, you know, what's necessary there. For me, it wasn't something super snazzy. It was simple. What's going to cost me less to ship? What's easiest? Also, you know, you have to pay for the shipping from your manufacturer to you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you might want a, a super cool, odd shaped package or a box or whatever it is, but they pack horribly and they don't stack yes. or something like that. So these are all things to think about as well. There, there's a design form that you want to look at, but there's also a functionality that you need to look at, especially in the beginning yes. when you don't have extra money to blow on shipping. And that's I think that's something both of us offer free shipping on all of our platforms. Yeah. I think people are quick to forget a lot of the expenses that happen when you do these things, I mean, free shipping is free for them. It's not for you and I. And it's six to six to ten dollars out of that cost. Yeah. Is, is I remember that, in the beginning I Googled how do people ship things for free? Yeah. <laughs> the truth is no one is shipping anything for Nobody free. Nobody is. Somebody's paying for it, whether it's you or the customer or whoever. Yeah. It's it's not free. Some it's buried in there somewhere. Yeah. Well, that's a really good point. 
So going back to your packaging, um, yeah. when it was a cardboard backer yeah. uh, type of thing, how did you even go about that? Did you just say, hey, City Global, I want this, and then they send you 100 questions? What? So uh, in my case, City Global had um, has an on-staff um, awesome graphic designer, and she basically said, what kind of artwork on there? What kind of colors do you want? I mean, I, I gave the basics of what I thought it was. She made it super pretty mm-hmm. and in, in a form that worked because... You know, in my case, you're you're putting my product is actually going getting zip tied to the card, and you don't want that you know the the hole for the zip tie to go or or any of that to block out words mm-hmm. or to go through your pictures or to do that or your so, safety language or your safety language. So she figured out um, how to do that, make it all snazzy and work, and then she would send me and be like, "What do you think about this?" So in my case, uh, they handled that part of it. As far as you know, finding other places, I looked in places in the U.S. I mean, you have to get a graphic designer, which you could. You could even go on a Fiverr and mm-hmm. get yourself somebody to help with packaging. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as getting, like, if I needed a, a bunch of cards right now, even I would have to go research somewhere locally. Like, I need these in a week or two weeks. I would have to go and find a place to do that. Yes. It's it, it's it's tough knowing where to go. And then um, also... the. The sucky part about packaging is it's after the fun part. Yeah. You've made your product. You've engineered it. It works. People seem to agree that they would buy it. Now you have to do all this work on packaging and all this thought and the back and forth and a little bit more cost. And it's really a thorn in the side because you're just not – maybe you're not in the mood. Maybe you are. Maybe you're an RT type of person and you really get encouraged by it. So me, since you asked, for my packaging journey (laughs) – I basically, um, I knew that I didn't have any capacity to design anything. I had hit up some uh, packaging design places in LA, and it was like, yeah, thirty five hundred bucks retainer, and we'll start conceptualizing, and we'll make sure it's this and that. And that was way out of the question. And I can pretty confidently say today, don't do that. Uh, I think that's a waste of money. I think one place even wanted to charge seven thousand dollars. Oof. And they weren't going to make me packaging. They were going to mock it up out of cardboard or clamshell, whatever. Yeah. They were going to graphic design it, all this stuff, probably have a bunch of revisions. But again, like we talked about um, with Todd on episode 25, you're going to be waiting on these people. You're Now you're on their time. They don't have a ton of motivation to get your job out the door. So what I did was I just uh, ordered thick poly bags, which is just a Ziploc bag, six mil thick. That was really important because a Ziploc bag in your, in your cupboard is not going to hold a a strap or even an anchor. Mm -hmm. Six mil thick bag. And I just printed out stickers, probably came out to 18 cents a piece at U printing. And I slapped a sticker on the front and back. The front said torque strap, the logo, load safe, load smart. The back was all safety information. And Honestly, to this day, that is still the best packaging I could have as a business owner. Why? Is because I made boxes and then my shipping went up by by 10% each shipment. That is not good as a business owner. That is mm-hmm. that is really not good. Uh the other reason is it didn't affect sales. We tried putting my fancy box in the main image on Amazon. Let's see if this increases our conversion rate blah blah blah. Didn't 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 really make any difference. So I was kind of harping on you about the customer experience, but you're kind of right. I mean, we're selling e-commerce. People just want a strap. They just want an anchor. They just want a shavakadu. Whatever you're selling, if they get it in their hand, that's fine. Now, if they're ordering in an electronic, sure, could be different. That was my experience. So that being said, are, are you going to keep a box or are you going to go back to the bag? If I was not lazy... I would reroute the manufacturer, deter him from the box that they're making, mm-hmm. go back to a bag, redesign stickers, put them on the front and back. But I'm so lazy that I've convinced myself that the customer experience, that opening it on Christmas morning type of uh, experience is more important than the bag. And ultimately, the bag will not hold up in retail. Now people are buying it on Amazon, but they're not buying it because they want to strap something down. They're buying it because, oh, you know, maybe I can make some money off of this. But if it's in a Ziploc bag that doesn't explain what it does, it's not appealing. It's not appealing. 
one wholesaler, one guy, uh, a guy in uh, in Illinois, he bought a dozen from us. Mm -hmm. And he puts them on the shelves, and he didn't even think of it. And he goes, dude, they just sit on the shelves. Like, no one knows what they do. No one understands it's spring-loaded. It's a strap in a bag. I have to sit here and pitch it every time I think somebody's looking. Oh, yeah, you know what that is? That's a new toy. And by that mm -hmm. time, they've scared the customer out of the store because they're being salesy. So it's super-duper important. Again... 95% of my sales are e-commerce. So I'm chasing this pipe dream. It's infectious. We all have it. We want to get in retail. It's like the staple of I made it. It's mm -hmm. the middle finger to the, everybody who said you couldn't. But you can make so much money on e-commerce. You don't have to worry about your packaging for, e for, for retail yet. I, I think that's a good point. And that's exactly where I'm at right now. And it's, do you need to worry about it? You should. You, you should definitely already start planning for other avenues because they'll pop up in the weirdest ways. Yes. Oh, it, it happened to me. Um, you know, there's um, a guy in, in Oregon, and he liked my product, and he took it into a local trailer shop, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, I get a call, and that was my first wholesale retail order from wow. them. Yeah, it was, it was very cool. But what that instantly, instantly my mind was like, I wasn't even thinking about that. And my, just to go back to, to whether your packaging works or not, they're very cool. They're a trailer shop, right? So yeah. people aren't expecting super snaz. Right. They're going to make a display, which is awesome. No right? kidding. Yeah. Uh, amazing. And, and so shout out to Frontier Trailers. Hell yeah. Yeah. And um, they, they, uh, they're going to make the display. And so my bag doesn't matter as much because their display shows what it does. What I said in their case, which I think a lot of people can do as well, if you do find a mom and pop place that will take your product on, ask to work with them as far as getting the data behind what works and what doesn't. Because mm. for these guys, I'm like, hey, just keep me updated and let me know if you need these hang cards i will get them made if you need some sort of cardboard display i will make that happen and you will like don't be afraid that's a good pro the good problem i'm having right now is that i need to hustle yeah. to figure out what kind of packaging to get more of my things sold because there's a genuine interest in out of these people right right amazing so i mean and that's it's kind of like you and the the guy you know, the guy who's like, I put these on my shelf. You wouldn't have known or thought about that unless he's like, oh, I'm having to sell, do all the work to sell your product. You'll fall into some of this stuff. But where I should have been better uh, is I should have already started researching other packaging and, uh, and how I could do it um, quickly because City Global is great for the manufacturing and also great for the packaging. It's just they're not great if I needed it next week. No, or this year. <laughs> I had, I, I'm no, sorry. I, no, no, no. Yeah, Well, absolutely. I didn't have a great experience with them. Yeah. I don't have any bad blood or ill will, but I want to put that out there because yep. you, you got a question last week, which was somebody really clung on to City Global yep. because we talked about it a lot. I went the direct-to-manufacturer route, which yep. has its hurdles. You went the broker route, which is City Global. And I think to most people... It sounded kind of peachy, roses and rainbows. Uh, my experience with them was so much time waiting. I didn't have the same tender love and care. I spoke with the graphic designer about packaging, mm. but it was like my communications always got stopped by a middleman, you know, a, a certain person in the group who all the communication had to go through the head guy. So even though she wanted to be like, yeah, Grant, let's work on it, it didn't quite work out that way sometimes she would ask me things of little consequence mm -hmm. do you want this red or dark dark red or light red yeah sure but when i would hit her up and be like so let's uh let's do this here's a mood board show let's let's really build the packaging then it would kind of go silent long story short months and months went by and then i started getting samples from quote their factories which is just factories they work with and it was pretty much the exact same result as if I was working with the factory, except I couldn't reach out directly to the factory engineer and say, these both have 85-pound springs. The red is supposed to have an 85, 
and the silver is supposed to have a 120 pound spring. And that's something that's so hard for a factory to understand why it matters. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, gr poor Grant, I accidentally, you know, one day made a platinum and then I decided to call it the platinum. Mm -hmm. And that's my business like lives off the fact that I have a good, better and best. This one's just a little bit stronger, but I couldn't. I could tell that to City Global, it, and yeah, they would get it. And then the translation probably wouldn't happen because even to them, it doesn't sound that important. Then the factory never hears. What does the factory do? They send me all the same product when it's supposed to be different. So back and forth I went. What I want to say is if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Now, it worked out wonderfully for your product because you were so, so patient. Yeah. Most people are not. Well, and and – it is an absolutely fair opinion, and your experience has been mostly different than mine. Mm -hmm. I still struggle with communication as well. Mm -hmm. um, I have the patience or had in that case. I mean, I'm dealing with some of the same stuff now. Yeah. Uh, you know, th those things aren't answered. I am still a very small fish in their group. Right. Um, I threw them them out there as what I'm using and an option to start with. Yeah. You're right. One of our listeners um, hit me up, well, hit us up uh, last week and is frustrated because he went through their online portal, if Submit you will. your crap. Hasn't heard anything and, and yeah. hasn't gotten back. I'm bummed out. I'm bummed out by that uh, for, for a couple reasons because you want the, the you know person you're with to be more on it and more communicative. Yeah. On the flip side, it's a good lesson in the fact that, you know, if, if you don't have the patience, which none of us, so few of us do because we want something, we're like, we either need something now or we want something now, you know, that's the diversification <laughs> yeah. thing, right? I offered up uh, to that guy, I offered up a, another, um, you know, I, I'm working with another manufacturer, direct Alibaba style for my carabiners and my bags. Yeah. And... The sad thing about that is the person on the other end of that email gets back to me in like less than 24 hours. Yeah. Super good communication. Yes. If I have a question and that that becomes gold. Yes. And that was part of me also saying before with diversifying your manufacturer, you start with what you know best and then you become less afraid to start researching and, and move move out of that. Right. Yeah. And this all is really important with packaging because yeah. – manufacturers kind of suck at packaging. So one of my early instincts was, okay, I got this uh, manufacturer making torque straps. They're cranking out. They made me a thousand piece order. And I say, okay, what, what options do you have for packaging? It's going to be pretty generic. It's going to be pretty much like a zip bag with a clear window, uh, canvas bags, whatever that just say strap on them and they're gonna be like yeah we'll just throw it in this this is good right and i'm like no i'm building a brand I, mm -hmm. I need bona fide packaging so they're really no good so what did you do I'm, like we, can i get to that no you always <laughs> you always harp on me for not asking you a question so i just did you, I, I do oh oh now that you asked oh, oh, oh yeah my, oh, that's no. just me being hilarious mark oh, is that you hilarious that no that's my antics all right so tell us since you asked <laughs> What Okay, so I told you the poly bag story, which is what I did before. What I want to tell you first is this. I got a question uh, on Reddit a couple days ago. I just answered it this morning. It was, hey, man, just built my invention. Got to package it. Don't really know where to go from here. Do I have China do it or do I do it here in the U.S.? The answer is neither. If you have China do everything, they're going to screw it up. First of all, they're not going to – with as far as artwork and design, they're English – is they only have good English when they're on Alibaba or like a WeChat because it automatically translates. But when they read words on an image and then they go to put it in art, they're physically typing it in, they're going to botch every other word. So you cannot rely on China to do your graphic design, especially not the manufacturer. That's not really their forte. I went back and forth a lot trying to do that. Don't make that mistake. So no, you can't have China do it all. Now in the US, you can find a firm like I talked about earlier who will say they'll take you from A to Z. It's probably a lie. They're probably still going to leave something unfinished and they're going to charge seven grand. So what you do is this. You find a US engineer or 
CAD designer to design the package, the mechanics of it. Okay, when I say design, I don't mean art. I'll say art when I mean art. You find a U.S. engineer or CAD designer to build the mechanics of your package. This is a cardboard box. They figure out, okay, how much does your strap weigh? When someone picks it up, picks it up is the strap going to fall straight out the bottom? Uh, does your quick tie down anchor have sharp edges? Maybe this isn't the best option because it's going to protrude out the side of a, of a poly bag. Uh, is it going to be a clamshell? Cool. Grant will work with a clamshell. Just know that, you know, like uh, my, my engineer's up in Canada. I'll shout him out soon. He's like, just know that up in Canada, you know, people are really getting away from plastic. So you may be kind of painting yourself into a corner if you go plastic. So we ended up going with cardboard. So this engineer is going to design the mechanics and the strength of the package. That is their job. That is it. Now, typically, this is a fairly easy job. If you know what you need, be very clear, be very respectful of these people's times. These people's time. Know what you need and go to them. Say, I know what I want to make. I want to make a clamshell. I'm going to send you uh, the product. They need the product. They're going to put their, their caliper on it, their micrometer on it. They're going to want to know every dimension because that packaging has to fit with it. And it has to have tolerances and this, that, and the other. It's not enough to say, oh, my, my anchor is uh, six inches long and the ring is an inch. No, because give the engineer the ability to engineer. They're going to get jiggy with it. They're going to make it, they're going to go above and beyond. They're prideful. They like what they do. They're going to be like, check this out, Grant. You can shake it and it doesn't even rattle in the package. It's form fit. So all that to be said, this is something that can usually be achieved on a one-off basis uh, where you could pay this engineer anywhere from, well, I'm not going to anchor low. I'm going to say $500 to $1,500. And the expectation is that you're going to work with him or her on about four different phone calls, four different occasions until you get it right. Beyond that, they're going to have to charge you more money because it's that's just what it costs. Now, what I did was I found a guy named Lance. He owns Freelance Designs in Canada. Uh, I'll put his I'll put his website in the description. This isn't sponsored. He's a friend of mine. We're honestly we just started working together, but I've had a really good experience with him. And I hired him as a fractional engineer. And what that means is, much like my ads guy, much like my Amazon guy, they're not direct employees of me. They're contractors. That's a beautiful thing for me and for them. They have the freedom to run their own business and have all that benefit. I do too. And I have the freedom to not have to pay them workman's comp, pay them a full-time salary, worry about what they're doing every single minute of the day. So I said, Lance, what do you think about this? Let's say that I pay you a retainer somewhere between $250 to $500 a month. That earns me your ear and your mind. So I have weekly meetings at Torxstrap with, with a few contractors and Steven. I said, you join those meetings. You're always on board. You always know what's going on. Your heart is in it. You, you brainstorm. And whenever there's a project that's front of mind for the company, like there is right now, the Torxstrap Pro, uh, that will be a project month where you get a premium, say of $1,500 that month. He's like, Awesome. Let's try it. Let's see how it goes. This is new to him. It's new to me. It's kind of my my Frankenstein workshop brainchild. Uh, but it's working out really well because Lance has participated in now three meetings. Now Lance throws out super pearls of suggestions and wisdom. Well, maybe we can virtually bundle it if the package does this and that. Now he's in sync with why I say what I say. When I think the box should be this conformed and have this angle, he understands why. Then he gives his input. And generally speaking, his input is twice as good as anything I would have thought of. So that's what a fractional engineer is. Now, I know for new inventors that even that's not an option. You don't want to pay somebody 500 bucks a month just to have them around. You should, but if you can't afford it, you can't afford it, and that's fine. And I did this for four years without Lance, so it's just my life's going to be that much easier moving forward. But that that being said, um, you know, like you just said, most most new inventors don't have four to five people on a Zoom yet. Right. And, and a Lance, where where do people find either a version of Lance or just a one-off uh, 
engineer for there. Here's the thing. They, uh, no offense, are a dime a dozen. Mm. There, we, we met yeah. uh, our prototype uh, episode, episode 18 with uh, Volcreate. Mm-hmm. They're doing the exact same thing. There is a million guys and girls in the U.S. who are engineers, who are fed up working their nine-to-five job, who love to tinker, and they Mm. love new ideas, and they want to do new things. It is so commonplace. The trouble is so few of them position their business in a way to be found. The ones that position their business in a way to be found are the firms. Mm-hmm. And this is where you fall into the trap and the cult mentality of design firms. 7,000, We talked yeah. about that with Todd on 25. The cult mentality of, you know, just give us 10 more grand, 10 more grand, 10 more grand. So to answer your question concisely, you have to Google search um, – Invent design engineer, inventing CAD engineer, uh, virtual designer, these keyword terms, and you pretty much just got to thumb through the first page, like forget about it. Mm -hmm. It's all paid ads. It's big firms. Get into page two. Get into page three. It may even be on page four, five, six. Uh, That's the reason I'm going to drop Lance's info is because he's a guy who genuinely likes what he does. He's not trying to trump up his company's valuation by... You know, he doesn't have a close, close, close mentality. He has a, I want to help people. And Mm -hmm. I don't need to get rich. If I get rich, it's because I build systems, whatever, that's a byproduct. But I'm here to help people. I'm not trying to get rich off of each inventor. I'm not trying to convince them they need things that they don't. So the way you find it is Google. You just ignore all that paid crap, all those big design firms. If you've heard of them, they're probably bad news. They're going to charge too much money. This is very simple engineering. It's boxes. Right. So once you've once you've passed that, you've got the engineering made, then let's say now we're looking for the artwork to go on there. Is that yes. the next step? That is the next step. Mm-hmm. And that is, these are the only two steps. So the next step is you just get on a Fiverr, an Upwork, a what have you. Uh, I found a really guy on Fiverr. His name is Kurt Maz, K-U-R-T-M-A-Z. He does like outdoor brands and packaging. He's really he's 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 got the eye and he's got the feel for what uh, outdoorsmen want to want to see. I threw him a mood board uh, for Torque Strap. I threw him a mood board, logos, quotes, load safe, load smart, easy, fast, simple. And I just threw these all over a canvas, which is a, a, like a keynote or a Microsoft PowerPoint. Nothing fancy. I just gave him a mood board. This is what I want the package to feel like, Kurt. And then he ran with it, and he just went above and beyond. It's like the packaging looked like it was diamond plate studded. I never brought that up. He just knew that was the feel I was going for, the rugged, the toolboxes, the throw it in, the slide it around. He knew <laughs> what I was going for. Okay, so what you do is you find a person, like I said, an Upwork or a, a Fiverr. Uh, I think there's other freelance platforms. doesn't really matter. And um, the good ones, they're going to be charging. You know, they may their, their pitch price may be like 99 or 199 will do design. But when you talk to them, odds are it's going to go up to more like 350 $300, $350 because, you know, you maybe you want uh, two, maybe you have two products, but whatever it is. And that's totally fine. That's reasonable. As long as you're not paying in the thousands, you're doing just fine. And as long as you have good communication, you feel comfortable with the individual. Give them a mood board. Give them the die line and the drawings that the engineer has just made you. We just talked about that, right? Simple stuff. Give them what the engineer just made you as far as dimensions and die lines. Die line is how a cardboard box is cut and laid flat. And then um, they'll just go to town. So that's two two steps. Two steps. And you said there are two steps. There's three steps. Where do you get it made? Then, only then do you go to China. <laughs> okay. You do not do that shit in the U.S. Right. Okay. I made that mistake too. Mm. I spent a month going back and forth with a packaging place down here in the Valley of L.A. And it was just, ah, oh, you want to do that? You want to do that? Okay, well, come back next week. I'm a little busy. All the crap we always talk about with mm. U.S., and then it turns out the guy wasn't even going to do it there. He was going to do it in his facility in Rhode Island, which was clearly another contractor. Mm-hmm. By the end of it, he wanted to charge me, and he wasn't designing anything. Mm-hmm. We had the design. We had the engineering. We had the shape. He was just 
getting cardboard, printing on it, and folding it into a freaking box. Or not even. He was going to flat pack them and ship them to us. It came out to $2.25 a box. And this is a box smaller than a cereal box. Okay. $2.25 a box. That was about half the cost of a strap at that point for me. Mm. China, I believe it was no more than 32 cents a box. From $2.25 to 32 cents. Right. And all China has to do is understand the die line, which you had engineered, so there's no question there, Mm -hmm. and print the art you sent them. So there's no redoing anything. They're not misspelling anything. They Minimal work. They will print it, and they will manufacture it. And U.S. guys, we went to one packaging place, me and Steve, and they looked, they looked at our box, and it was glossy, right? That's what China does. They print glossy. In the U.S., they're going for the mat and all that stuff. And they're like, oh, yeah, this is crap. They're printing on 362 cardstock, pretty glossy. Yeah, you don't want to go with this. I'm like, yeah, Dick, I'm not going to pay you 225 just so it's not glossy. What China does, China does. I'm sorry, but I'm running a business. Right. And that's how I went about that. So the answer is... You design it, excuse me, you engineer it, and you art it in the U.S., and you ship that information to China, and they will find a guy across the street who makes clamshells. They'll find a guy around the block who does cardboard boxes from from the factory where they make it. They're all within arm's reach. This is the country of industry, and they will nail it. And that's how you do your packaging on the cheap. I would say less than $1,000. Yeah, and and that's important, and it's... You know, in my case, like I said, I'm I may have to rush to come up with something, and if I did, just something out there. This is a very generalized statement, but don't be afraid to have to eat it and pay a bit more to get the ball rolling, and then suss out and do it super properly like that. Because you're going to have these times where you need something now, yeah. or or it has to happen, or you need to impress somebody, or you need a one off. You're going to pay more for that. You don't want to ultimately keep going with that, but you don't need to be super afraid. But one thing Craig had brought up, just just as far as packaging goes, um, you know, a lot of us want to put thirty two bullet points of what what it yeah. does. It's it's clean. It's fast. It's this. It saves time. It does this. It could be used it, as this. It, it could, could be, be used as that. He's like, keep it to three. Yeah. He goes, three bullet points are read and understood. Anything past that, like five. He goes, for some reason, then you lose all three. Yeah. People just don't pay attention. So, you know, there's one thing about getting it together and and doing that, but also understanding what needs to go on there. In your case, you want your product to be able to be touched. Yeah. Right? So putting it in a box, you ha- you're going to have a window of some sort in or there cutout, people, yeah. or a cutout, and people can actually reach through and cut. So there's lots of little things, and you can go online, and you can research packaging, and you can see what you like get a general understanding of the, the avenue you want to go, and then you can work with your engineer to figure that out too, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that's part of working with the engineer. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and working with an engineer on on Fiverr, I don't really recommend because Fiverr and those platforms, they're really good at keeping you disconnected. I think now they have like video chat options, so you can be a little bit more connected, and maybe that's the only way you can find somebody. That's fine. Just... Know what you're getting into, and we've just explained it. Know when not to pay too much or when when things just aren't going wrong, when to say, eh, cancel this order. We're, we're not jiving. I'm going to move on to the next. You guys are a dime a dozen. And that's packaging. I hope that addresses most people's questions with packaging because, yeah, somebody did reach out, and I realized we've been a little bit ambiguous about it, and we always try to give really, really tangible pathways to get these tasks executed. Well, just to add on to that, I know you're you're closing it up, but um, if you're at a super loss, something you can do right now is go down to the store, which is is not only what you can do, it's what you you should and kind of need to do, and look in the aisle that your product would potentially be in, and look at all the other packaging, because it's all that way for a reason. If you're doing straps, you know you go to Home Depot and you look in their strap section, there's going to be the plastic, you know where it's just out in the open, there's going to be boxes, there's going to be one-offs. That's a great way to start looking at things and also to get an idea of maybe what colors are hot. I talked to, I think we we did talk about that briefly in an episode. I went into a Harbor Freight and the manager was super cool. She was basically like, you know what? Blues are hot right now. 
that's what seems to be selling on this. And so if you're going to make some packaging, put blue in it. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. there's a lot more to it than that, but it's great. And it also starts giving you an idea and getting you motivated to what you want as well. Absolutely. Yeah. hundred percent. Love it, man. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been fun. I'm glad we got that out there. It's so important for you guys to learn. I want to thank everybody for stopping by and listening today. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you're listening, follow the show on whatever platform you may be on. It really helps on the back end. Guys, once again, thanks. This has been 27, an episode around packaging. Enjoy your week, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.